hundred forty. Okay, I will be joining. So they'll be joining. Great. So my PPT would be shared from another system. I have just forwarded the link um, with that person. Meanwhile, can someone write in the chat box? And I'll invite everyone to write in the chat box. What could be the accessible digital resources? Please write in the chat box. What could be accessible digital resources? Crossword lab, okay. DROER, what is DROER? What is Google? YouTube links, okay. What else? OER, open educational resources, ebooks, blogs. Okay. Diksha. Diksha is a platform or content. Okay. Audacity. And somebody else also written something like any digital content that can be easily accessible for all including CWSN. Okay. Content, pictures, PDF, H5P, easy, easily available resources and could use by anyone for their learning process. E-text, audios and videos, videos, Jamboard. Okay. GeoGebra. So we are still using GeoGebra. Padlet. Fine. Then live worksheets. Okay. So this is about digital content. Now tell me uh, one thing. Now for my next question, I would like you to please unmute yourself if you want to give your answer. Not and um, learning apps are also there. Suppose you have to make a digital content on the famous classical story of the fox and the grape. What will you do? Anyone? We can record, madam, in the using the recorder. Yeah, you can record using the recorder. Audacity, By recording madam. it, yes, sir, definitely good. PowerPoint infographics, great. But by stop animation, but by recording, sir, will we be able to make it accessible for all? Or will we be able to make it partially accessible? I'll create stop motion and animation. Very good, sir. It will be partially accessible. Good. So, and if you'll record it, how will you record it? Raghavendra, sir. Uh, I will record it? using the Audacity recorder. You will record it using the Audacity recorder. Audacity. But prior to recording, you will have to prepare some written content, right? Yeah, from textbook. What could yeah. that be? Okay, what could from, that be? Okay. From textbook, madam? Textbook? No, not textbook, sir. Mm -hmm. Since it's a story of fox and the grapes, so your story may start like once upon a time there was a fox. The fox was the fox spotted a bunch of grapes on a tree on a planter, and uh, the grapes was at a particular height, right? All these kind of narratives needs to be there. Okay, so my voice is low. Somebody is saying. So let's wait for a few more reactions to this. GIF image, okay, very creative. Sita Ram Yadav ji, yes, GIF image can also be created. And I'm requesting Miss Samantha to please share my PPT. Samantha, are you there? Uh, yes, ma'am. 
So will it take few moments to share? Uh, Ma'am, actually I have the presentation ready, but I think I haven't been given the rights to share yet. Okay. Mr. Okay, okay yes ma'am, I've got it. Yes ma'am. Okay. Chale, kar your presentation share. So in this session, as Pinky has very rightly, Dr. Pinky Singh has very rightly introduced that we will be discussing about accessible digital resources and we'll be starting with uh, whatever is said about accessible digital content in the National Education Policy 2020. We all are aware about the National Education Policy 2020 and it has made many recommendations regarding digital e digital content and making them accessible and this entire five days training is also regarding creation of content using various apps using various platforms and what are the precautions that needs to be taken while developing the digital content so nep 2020 says we have to use extensively the technology, whatever technological solutions are available. Then we have to remove the language barriers. As I was saying, Fox and the Grape, suppose I record this story in Tamil, then will it be useful for, for a person in Meghalaya? Or then will it be useful for, for a person living in maybe UP or West Bengal? May not be. So while Preparing digital content, we have to take care of the local languages as well as the language of the major clientele for which the content is to be used. Third point is the access for all the digital content created needs to be increased for the young students. And then we have to prepare accessibility softwares and take into account all the accessibility concerns, then be it related to disability, be it related to disadvantages, or be it related to any other special needs or educational backlog. So, and fifth point is teaching, learning, e-content will continue to be developed in all regional languages. So how many regional languages do we have? We have 22 scheduled languages, but more than that, we have five language families. And after that, and within these five language families, we have more than 1700 accepted languages within India itself. Move on to the next one, please. So Diksha Swim will be better integrated across school and higher education. This is again one of the recommendations of NEP 2020, and it is paragraph 23.6 of NEP 2020. Then standards of content technology and pedagogy will be laid to formulate guidelines for e-learning e by states and boards, schools and school complexes, higher education institutes, etc. Few of these guidelines are already prepared and they are available on various websites, including MOE, CIT, as well as NCERT website. Then another recommendation is schools will develop smart classrooms for using digital pedagogy. Now, when we are saying digital pedagogy, it could be purely online, it could be on blended mode as well. Then teachers will undergo rigorous training in learner-centric pedagogy on how to become how quality online content creators themselves using online teaching platforms and tools. So next one, please. Yes. So what is the need and scope of digital content? That is accessible digital content. It may help us in reducing dropout rates due to lack of resources. It may accommodate diversity in learning styles and it is expected to promote inclusion. Now, before I, okay, uh, before I go on to the next slide and uh, give you the definition of inclusion, we have Durga Prasad ji from Andaman and Nicobar. Durga Prasad ji, can you unmute yourself and tell what could be the Inclusive education. Or anybody from Andaman for that matters. Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, a very good afternoon. Uh, in in 
in inclusive education uh, the content should be said that it could be accessible by uh, uh, cwls and students and even the other, other students also right right so in the context of digital education digital content the accessibility needs to accommodate the needs of all learners irrespective of the background from where the needs are arising now coming back to the earlier example of fox and the grapes if i have to make this story accessible what would i do somebody has mentioned storyboarding somebody has mentioned storyline storyboard using the stop motion animation using the gif so all these if i'm using will a child with blindness be able to enjoy the story the way he or she should be think about it okay if your answer is no then we'll really have to sit down put on our thinking hats and see how to make that story accessible for that person or for that child who is not able to see and meanwhile inclusive education what is inclusive education it is a system of education wherein students with and without disability learn together and the system of teaching and learning is slightly suitably adapted modified accommodated to meet the learning needs of different types of students with disabilities now when i am saying suitably adapted what does it mean say for example in this story of fox and grapes a blind child may never have seen the grapes in a bunch because might it is quite possible that uh, his or her caretaker might be serving his or him um her or uh, him some grapes on a platter instead of giving the bunch of grapes to the child so what the child can do what as an adult we can do yes somebody saying something okay so the adults can what can we do is we can while in the context of this story to make the story accessible we need to make the child touch a bunch of grapes so that the child understands the organization of grapes in a bunch and if possible you can also bring in a leaf of the grape vine as well so that the child is able to smell touch and taste the grapes and similarly for fox for a child or for a person who is able to see fox can be seen easily you can connect with the fox through its his its pictures but let me ask you one question how many of us have seen have heard a fox speaking first four answers in the chat box will tell me how many of us have, have heard the sound of a fox may not right okay so if while teaching this story i am attaching only in comics comics you can read sir you can't hear the sound so if while discussing this story if i somehow make the children make everybody listen to the real sound of fox that is easily available on google as well in audio format then everywhere next time the children are hearing the sound they'll be able to associate it with the fox so that is enhancement for the entire class and making the content accessible so by taking care the need of a particular child arising either due to disability or disadvantages we are enhancing the content for the entire classroom and for each and every learner so by making the content accessible and that to in a digital mode we need to take care of all formats of inputs of information that we can add on be it visual be enhancement through audios by through an enhancement through other verbal description all text and so on next one please 
so if i am talking again and again about disadvantages and disabilities do we have their mention in the nep 22 2020 yes very much so nep 2020 recognizes five identities of scdgs so what is scdg socio economically disadvantaged groups and the very first identity is female and transgender individuals second is scheduled caste scheduled tribe obcs and minorities third one is students from villages small town and aspirational districts fourth is socio economic conditions this covers children belonging to uh, low income households migrant communities children in vulnerable situations victims of or children of victims of trafficking orphans including child beggars in urban areas and the urban poor and the fifth is 21 disability conditions recognized in rpwd act 2016 so we recognize 21 different disability conditions after the right of persons with disabilities act 2016 so if i give you 30 seconds to count the number of disabilities that you are able to count you will not go beyond 10 it's a challenge try doing it and share in the chat box how many disability conditions you are able to count okay blind is one 11 you are able to do 26 that's interesting subramaniam sir and talib hussain ji 26 and 21 dr molinka and dr pinky you are uh, supposed to collect their responses and give it to me all those who are able to count 26 and 21 disability conditions great and meanwhile for others like me who are not able to list all the 21 disability conditions kindly take help of google and reach the real document of rpwd act 2016 yes deafness is definitely a disability condition next one please so how do we support children with special needs so when i am saying children with special needs it includes all children who may have uh, needs due to disability or disadvantages okay and when i'm saying cwd it is children with disabilities only so we have to give them admission to regular schoolings that to nearby schools so that all children living in a society living in neighborhood attend the same school and we can be friends and be a support system to each other and for this we need to establish some enabling mechanisms what could be these enabling mechanism we have to provide assistive devices we have to give orientation to parents we have to organize alternative forms of schooling so that each child gets the inputs in his or her preferred mode now what are these alternative forms of schooling alternative forms of schooling could be home based education alternative forms of schooling could be nios like open schooling which is a pan india kind of a system or alternative forms of schooling could be blended learning as well and for this the teachers are supposed to undergo trainings both pre service as well as in service level so this current training could be part of that initiative which has been recommended in nep 2020 and what will this lead to this lead to enhanced access to educational facilities and provisions for all the children which are included in the scdgs group next one please so what is accessible e content e content could be anything which is available in digital form which you very nicely each one ss has mentioned in the chat that it could be pdf it could be audio it could be video it could be ppt it could be stop animation it could be gif so anything in digital which 
is available can containable in the digital format it is accessed through electronic device meaning of accessible e content the accessible e content provides a content is accessible when it provides opportunity to acquire the same information engage in same interaction and enjoy the same services as a person with disability in an equally effective and equally integrated manner say for example again fox and the grape story if a blind child or blind person is able to enjoy the story as much as a person with um with vision or a person who can hear then that content is accessible and accessible e content is fully equally independently operable by a person with disability just like a person without disability and it should provide comparable ease say for example if i am using my computer for typing on the word ms word a blind person should be able to do the same either using the braille keyboard or using the speech to text feature of the software or system next one please so what are what is this now in the one of the slides we have discussed about the guidelines the standards for development of digital content so moe and ncert in collaboration has come up with the guidelines for development of e content for children with disability so what could be this this is a set of do's and don'ts that help us in understanding what content could be made accessible and how the content is to made accessible so that learning needs of each and every child in the classroom is met next one please so this guidelines the cover page of which we have just seen recommends that all websites all mobile devices should be compliant with gigw what is gigw government of india guidelines for website accessibility and it has three parts one part is mandatory one is essential and the third part is it's like once you have covered the first two parts then you can go to that advanced third part of the gigw guidelines and then you you need to have a website quality certification from stqc or any other government approved agency and under pm uh, vidyadan experts teachers in individuals and organizations they can provide their content for uploading on diksha but there is a procedure anybody can access resources available on diksha but as well as Uh, as far as vidya dan is concerned there is a set sop that needs to be followed because as you and i know on wikipedia anybody can write anybody can upload any content without questioning the quality but on diksha that is not there sop is there to ensure the quality and relevance of the content and it is also recommended that before yes the quality and accessibility needs to be validated next one please so the recommendation continues and these are the pointers that we need to take into consideration and this is for each one of us who is participating in this training that once your hands on sessions will start please make sure that the content that you are developing is accessible for all all text must be available in logical reading order separate presentation and content provide complete navigation create meaningful structure wherever possible define the content of each tag include semantic information to describe the content of the tag use images only for pictures not for tables or text here we need to supplement it with all text and then we have to use image descriptions why we need to use image descriptions so that when app like text to speech or daisy is used and so what does the daisy do or tts does 
TTSS, text to speech reader or NVDA. Oh, sorry, if I'm going too fast. So um, text, to, text to speech reader or daisy reader or the screen readers, what do they do? If there is a picture on the screen along with alt description, Yes, you can definitely make videos of real students enhancing the story or role play. Definitely you can do, but as I was saying, all text, the use of all text is, the daisy will say there is a there is an image on this page and the image is described like this. So that gives a comparable quality experience to persons who are not able to see. And then don't forget to include the page numbers, define the languages, which spellings you are using. And what is Math ML? Math ML is the software that is used to write Braille mathematics, like equations in mathematics that can be written in Braille using Math ML. Then we have to provide alternative access to media content. Say, for example, in, in many of the movies, their audio forms are also available. Now you must be thinking, what's a big deal in converting a video into an audio, that too of a movie. But think again, there are many incidents, many scenes, many um, small sections in a film where no dialogue is there, but the camera is moving from one point to another, maybe showing the scene of a house, maybe showing a crime scene, or maybe showing a party or something, where the dialogues are now there, might be some music is there. So in that scenario, you have to give some alt description that why it's sudden silence on the screen. That makes the movies accessible. Then you have to make in content interactive as far as possible. And, um, use only Unicode phone. Why Unicode? Unicode helps us in transferring the content from one media to another without actually changing the meaning. Because my personal experience is if I'm using a particular code for typing and suddenly I change the font, then the meaning and spellings gets changed. So I have talked about DAISY. What is DAISY? DAISY is Digital Accessible Information System, which is an open standard published by National Information Standards Organization called NISO. And DAISY is nothing but audio text. Whatever printed text or textbooks we are reading or books or novels we are reading, if they are available in DAISY format, Daisy gives additional features for navigation of the audio content. Let's see what these features are. Next one, please. So Daisy versus audiobooks. Daisy can fit into one CD, whereas for the same content in an audiobook form, you may require multiple CDs. Daisy is easy to skip content as per convenience. Say, for example, I wanted to go to chapter number eight. So in Daisy, it becomes easy. Whereas in audiobooks, you have to skip the content through forwarding or backward and forward. It may be a little clumsy for a person who is not able to see. But Daisy navigation is much easier and end user friendly who have some issues with the vision. Index helps reach the content directly. Index does not aid movement across tracks in the audiobook. Daisy use bookmarks, audio does, audiobooks doesn't use bookmarks. And Daisy remembers where one left off, just like your Kindle reader, which is a visual form. And audiobooks, they don't remember where you have left the previous session or a listening session, where we have you ended. Now, um, there is, this is an example of accessible digital content developed by NCERT. This is Priya, the accessibility warrior. It, it's, a, it's in the comic book form, which is available in both English and Hindi. And not only the content, which makes you aware about 
what all accessibility features you may notice in your surroundings such as home office school and your institution but it also gives you ideas how to make your surroundings accessible and this book has inbuilt games and activities in a while i'll ask the, uh, samantha to show us the clipping from priya now let's move on next one so what is assistive technology any technical solution that helps in my day to day activities is assistive technology now if there is no digital technology involved will it be assistive technology are assistive technology and assistive educational technology are same or different so anybody would like to answer these two questions can someone give me a scenario where digital technology is not available not involved but still i am using some assistive aid ma'am pardon question again please if there is no digital technology involved is it still assistive technology maybe or yes teaching learning material concrete tlm may be used okay yes very true say for example i need a pencil of a thick grip so i can attach rubbers to it i can attach used clothes to it i can use thermocol so that would also be assisting me in my day to day needs but may not be essentially using digital technology and assistive technology and assistive educational technology assistive technology is a broader term and educational assistive educational technology might be called as a subset of the same which is focusing only on the needs related to teaching learning situation and assistive technology is a human right obligation as well, which is mentioned in un crpd not na, unit united nations convention on rights of persons with disabilities it is mentioned there as well next one please and you might be surprised to know that our right of persons with disabilities act 2016 has adopted the guidelines given in uncrp so for whom assistive technology or accessible digital content is required it is required for older people it is required for people with non communicable diseases such as diabetes and strokes it may be required for people with mental health conditions may be required for people with gradual functional decline whose um the day to day functionality is as in the muscle grip or the vision or hearing is declining or the mobility is declining of course persons with disabilities persons with language concerns persons with communication challenge persons coming from disadvantaged section or scdgs next one please so how do i find the right assistive technology first of all i need to understand the need of the person for whom i need the assistive technology say for example let me um, give you one example that a child was granted hearing aids under samagra shiksha the hearing aid was fitted to the child ears it was customized as per the dimensions of the head and ears and after a year or so by the time it was time for next assessment camp the hearing aid was not functioning so the officials asked last time we have issued a hearing aid to you which is quite costly what has happened to that the parent and the child said it is not functioning any longer the officials were surprised because the hearing aid was supposed to last long so what would have happened to this child's hearing aid any guesses
So who would like to unmute and answer? Shalija, madam, Telangana. Yes, beautiful smile. Thank you, ma'am. Hmm. Yeah, ma'am. Tell me what Maybe would have been wrong not with that. for the suitable. Yes. Pardon? Sorry, sir, I missed the answer. Shalitya, madam, Maybe. please repeat. Maybe it is not so not for her. Okay, not required, no, no longer required. needed. Okay. Or could it be just that the batteries of the device might have died out? <laughs> And it is not a makeshift story. It is a real incident that has happened. Yes, yes. Because that happened a lot. Yes. We distribute devices under, under Samagru Shiksha and then we fail to orient the parents and the user. So what happens? Just because of little maintenance issues, the devices remain unused and targeted specific skills. So let me repeat the example that I gave for the last session as well for the last SRG training. Suppose you're trying to purchase a mobile phone for your um, aged father and mother at home or some aged person at all. And if you'll give them the high-end smartphone, will, we, will they be able to use it? May not be able to use it. Even you and I do not use all the features available in our smartphones. So we have to take into account what are the needs of the person who are for whom we are looking for an assistive device. Next one, please. Okay. So principles of assistive technology. What makes an assistive device, assistive technology, a good assistive technology? technology. So this is 5A and QI. So what are the 5As? It should be easily available. It should be accessible. It should be affordable. It should be adaptable. It should be accepted by the person for whom, say for example, the mobile, I'm giving the smartphone high end to my father, but he is not at all interested in learning the usage. So that is not acceptable to him. And it should be of good quality and the devices should be interoperable. It should be able to connect with and blend with other devices easily. Next one, please. So this is time for hands-on on learning at some apps. So you can click the picture of this as such the PPT we will be sharing. So the very first app that is like I'm really interested in and I'll urge everyone to use this is Be My Eyes, the device, the app listed at point number three. Now, what happens here? Suppose a person with blindness goes to a place which is not familiar to them. The Ma'am, your voice is breaking. In front of this person. Is there a... Oh, might be technical error somewhere. Is it better now? So I'll urge everyone to use this app, Be My Eyes, and if possible, encourage... Not yet, ma'am. Ma'am, you are not audible. Hello? Ma'am? Yes, Pinky, ma'am. Uh, yeah, Bharti, ma'am, is... Ma'am, Bharti, ma'am, is disconnected right now. She okay. will be joined soon. I'm sorry, there was some issue with the internet. So I got disconnected. Okay, 
so you can use this be my eyes and you can also use tap tap see so tap tap see what does it does um you have to install this app on your phone and then you will click a picture uh, using this app audio description appears in both audio as well as text form so if you are low vision you can you may be able to read it but the option is there that you can hear the picture description as well i urge all of you to kindly so that somebody is helped and also just explore all the seven eight apps that are appearing on your screen so next one please so how do i implement set up an enabling unit ma'am just a just a second previous slide please previous slide please you want to click the picture okay yes, go on <laughs> thank you ma'am okay next one so uh, collaborate establish partnership now all the five states each participant can you um, exchange the number of at least three persons from other states and create a smaller group create a google document create a ppt create a canva project or create stop motion project stop animation project so that you can give inputs to each other that would be fun try doing it and be uh, friends for life not only for this training session only organize yes pass on the training and learnings to your other colleagues and friends and accommodate needs not on the basis of equality but on equity so what is the difference between equality and equity anyone if i am okay let me give you an example if i am giving biscuits to everyone and i am giving the same biscuit to a person who doesn't have teeth yes equity is as per need very true so for a person who doesn't have teeth what do i do i can dip the biscuits in milk and give it to the person that is addressing the needs next one please so what are the barriers and challenges these are we all are aware of this lack of awareness technophobia lack of appropriate legislation policies and um, maybe programs services products inaccessible environment lack of human resources and financial barriers these are some of the barriers that we are familiar with and recently ncert has launched a precious disability screening checklist for schools which can be downloaded from um, android app in the form of android app from the play store just go through this app it will help you in screening children with disabilities at the school level very easy to use app at the moment available only in english but soon will be made available in hindi and other languages as well next one yes so now if i have to make this page from my class 1 textbook developed by ncert ci ncert how do i do this anybody ma'am we can use the toys to tell them bigger and smaller very and good we... but if you are taking the class online then what then we can use the images only then we can and if a child is not able to see uh um we can use the voices of animals okay by listening to the voice of a puppy and a squirrel Well, will you be able to tell which one is bigger me no so what do i do 
I need to prepare a script in such a manner that the answer is not given. Yeah, he can check his uh, fingers of the palm. Okay. Do we have good so that uh, he can differentiate the bigger one and the smaller. Yes. Here. Go on. You are on a. Yeah, my dear. Please ask you for this page. Ma'am, your voice is still breaking. My voice is still breaking. Now the system is saying log off. Give chance to Dr. Monica to discuss her session. So, um, so I'll wait till valedictory to give you script of this page. Okay. So over to Dr. Monica, Dr. Pinky, in case there are no questions. And this is the last slide. Let's initiate a new beginning. For most people, technology makes things easier. And for people with disabilities, technology makes things possible. Thank you. Yes, uh, Vakul Bharaji, you want to say something? No, ma'am, I clap. OK, thank That's you. That's that for uh, emoji. Thank, Thank you, ma'am. So, so, no Thank question. Thank you for your wonderful session. Thank you. My pleasure. Anyone who wants to ask anything? So, no queries, Dr. Pinky. So, that makes my task easier. So, see you, everyone, during valedictory. Thank you so much, ma'am. Okay. For sharing Thanks. so much, so many important points and recommendations, principles, and apps which we need to keep in mind while we are developing e content. Correct. So, as a state Thank resource group, we have to keep all these important points in our mind, keeping Thank everyone in equal. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. And now we, we will move ahead for our uh, 